Hello my art loving friends! Today we will be trying these Monami Color Twin Brush Markers in Christy Rice's Painterly Days Watercolor Workbook. These twin brush markers have been in the stash that I got from my grandma's house quite a long time ago now, at least it feels like it. Anyway, they were calling my name today so I just keep seeing them as I walk by and I want to try them out. Can't get them out, but I want to try them out. <laughs> so you can see it's mostly a pack of blues and then we have a purple and maybe some kind of warm gray. Does it have a name? That is the question of the day. Nope, no color names on them. Ah, there are color names on the box, however. Neutral gray seven, violet, blue, blue celeste, sky blue, and pastel mint. So this is meant as a water coloring book for adults. However, the paper in it just doesn't take watercolor very well. It takes it. You can see that I have painted in it with watercolors before. This was a Marabou Aqua Pin Graphics, so that was another type of water-based marker. And then somewhere back here I have one more at least painted or partially painted with the Chocola brush pins. And the image I want to try today with these markers is this one here with these hummingbirds because the blues and the hummingbirds I think would just go well together. So I'm going to limit it to just these markers, just this palette, which I think is going to make it very fun. Real quick before we start, I'll show you a quick close up of the marker. You can see it has the labeling there, the brush pin on this side, which looks quite nice, and a little finer brush pin on this side twin brush, just like the box says, which is probably going to be pretty handy. I am kind of curious what these colors actually look like on paper. Oh, that's way darker than I would have expected, so I'm glad I tested that. I wasn't going to. I was just going to go right into the coloring, but I don't see, and that's a little lighter than I expected. Very interesting. It's nice they have these big color blobs on those, the one side. You can tell exactly which side has the larger brush pin. That's very bright. <laughs> They're squeaky. <laughs> that one is not as squeaky. This one feels softer for some reason. Just want to feel what the other side feels like. Feels very similar. All right, these are the color choices we get for this coloring book today. I started out by putting some washi tape along the edge there, and I was using some washi tape I didn't like because I couldn't get it to stick to my watercolor paper, so. It was a good one to put in here. I love the design on it, but it's not very sticky. And then I just started painting and painting. Marker painting, I guess. <laughs> Markering? Yes. So for the next hour and a half, I worked on this little drawing. And I thought at first that I would probably just do a little bit and take a break. But I ended up just finishing the whole thing all in one sitting. I was listening to a podcast by the uh, Huber, Hu Huberman Labs. Andrew Huberman. Anyway, they have some pretty interesting podcasts over there and they have a YouTube channel so I can glance up once in a while and see the people who are talking, which is kind of fun. I also like to listen to the Minimal Mom podcast and the Frugal Fit Moms podcast, although hers, when they do the budget breakdowns, I'm not very interested in that, but some of the other subjects are pretty fun. As far as these markers go, I almost stopped right in the beginning because you could tell how streaky it was. So these markers are very soft. They will put out a lot of their ink, if that's what you want to call it, the marker ink. And so this paper just wasn't great for it because it would soak into one little streaky section and not really spread out. And I don't know why I didn't think of it when I was doing it because I have water and a brush right here in front of me on the desk, like at the top of the screen here, just above the coloring book that you're seeing. I have my water jars with water in them and I have a brush nearby so I should have tried to mix them with water to see if it would kind of stir around and blend together because these are water based markers but for some reason I didn't think of it and I think it was just I don't know I had tunnel vision I was going to just color this the way it was regardless and not add any water so even though there's two other pages in this coloring book where I have taken markers and added water to them and it does help. It did help with those other markers, the Chocola brush pins and the Marabou Aqua Pin graphics. They did spread a little bit more. Granted, you have to do it immediately once you lay the marker down. You can't just put it on weight and then try and do it because then it doesn't work at all. But 
I don't know. I didn't try it with these and, and I regret it because I wish that I would have. Then I could have given you better information even on how these markers work with water added to them. Unfortunately, I was a dum-dum and didn't do it. For this kind of coloring book, I definitely could have used a bullet nib, which is interesting because I was pretty excited that this had dual brush pens, one larger, one slightly smaller, but to get into the fine details, I actually could have used a much stiffer nib that's more like a traditional bullet nib. So there's that. This is probably good markers for more freeform work and not so much a coloring book where you're trying to color around little details. And I was worried because I was putting so much gray in the background, I thought, oh, I'll probably run out of ink in this marker. Ink, is that what you're called? I don't know what to call it. I guess I'm just gonna call it ink anyway, but I didn't. And in fact, it seemed like there was still plenty of ink left in the marker at the end. So that's good because I would like to try these and I'll mention that more in my conclusions at the end. And I was going to slow some of this down and do some of this more real time for you guys, but I was kind of looking at it and it wasn't any more interesting than you're seeing it sped up because you can see the streakiness just fine with all of this sped up. And once in a while there was a you know squeaky noise, but the there was no big squeaky like you saw when I did the little swatch because I think I was just using the, these in such fine little areas that I didn't really notice any sound at all. I also didn't notice any smell, so nothing obnoxious, which water-based marker you wouldn't expect a big smell anyway. You would probably expect more in an alcohol-based marker, but that's not the case here. And I probably should have broken this up into more than one session because towards the end I was just getting a little bit tired. Not tired of the drawing per se, but just tired. And I was getting a little tiny bit frustrated about not having that stiff bullet nib available to get into some more details and some more fine lines. Actually, you can get pretty fine lines with a stiff bullet nib, but can't really with these soft brush tips. So at the end, I kind of just was blobbing color on the birds and then kind of scribbling. But at the same time, it was really fun. So yes, maybe I should have taken a break and I could have done a better job. But at the same time, I had fun just blobbing color and scribbling, like I mentioned. So I don't know, it is what it is. and. I enjoyed the session, it was it was good. Now as far as this Christy Rice coloring book, this is not my favorite watercolor coloring book. Not only does the pictures themselves, they have like weird details in them that make it kind of hard, even if you wanted to use watercolor, I think they might be more useful for like the little colored fine liners actually. <laughs> and yeah, there are big open spaces in the background that you could probably use watercolor or if you use watercolor on it, a big wash in the back and then maybe come on the top with some kind of markers. But yeah, it's not my favorite watercolor book. The, some of the designs are okay. Some just don't speak to me at all. The paper is slick and not really great for, well, not much of anything that I've used. I, I've gotten pretty good luck though with the markers as long as they've had the bullet nib. So these weren't the best choice for this, but still it was fun, uh, relaxing. And I have another coloring page done. That always makes me very happy because I have so many coloring books that are very much incomplete that every time I finish a page in one, I feel a good sense of accomplishment. So you can see here how I'm just kind of scribbling that turquoise color in and then kind of scribbling the other turquoise on top of it. It's just fun. <laughs> just kind of blobbing it around. I like it. So I did receive some happy mail later this day that I was coloring this that has a lot of fun watercolors in it. So I still have some watercolors left from previous happy mail that we haven't looked at yet either. So keep an eye out for that video. That'll either be next week or the week after. Regardless, next week's video is full-fledged watercolor one way or another because I have two great ideas for what it's going to be and I'm excited for it and I can't wait to dig into it. I wanna do it right now, except uh, I kinda need to get this video out for you guys first and I love sharing this stuff with you. So out of all the pages that I have completed in this book, which aren't very many, as you saw, this is my absolute least favorite. <laughs> Uh, yeah, at the end I figure the birds, they just don't stand out enough so you can see I take the darkest marker, the blue, and outline them and that helped a lot, but it's still just kind of a ho-hum, humdrum page for me, which is kind of a bummer because hummingbirds can be so beautiful and I just didn't do the greatest job on them. This, this just looks like elementary scribbles. That's okay though. 
It's a bit of a mess, but they weren't exactly the right markers for this paper. So I need to try these again in the future, but not today, because I'm, I'm done. I'm done with markers for now. I love markers in general, but I was going to put these all in the same direction. Anyway, love markers in general, but I need to find a slick surface paper, I think, for these particular markers. So maybe actual marker paper. We'll just put them in the drawer to come across again sometime in the future. Maybe I should just put them with the other markers and add them to the inventory. It was exactly what I needed today and it did not bleed through at all. Not even a little bit. So that's good. And I did put the back flap of the thing to protect that page, but it didn't need it. So tell me in the comments below when you just need a brainless art activity to do, what do you guys do? I would love to read and get some ideas. All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.